Hey guys, welcome back to another edition of the Bowers Podcast. I'm Travis Stowe, one of the hosts of the show. Today, Scott Chasen and I brought on Nate, the developer of Painted Arrow. What he developed was a really cool product that Scott got to test or test out firsthand. It's specifically for bow hunters. They're developing other things, but for the purpose of this episode, it allows you to use your phone to film point of view of what you are actually shooting at. It is an incredible product. We brought Nate on to describe what the product is about, why he developed it, and some cool stories along the way. I hope you enjoy it. Let's get it going. All right. Well, it's been an eventful morning so far, so I appreciate, uh, appreciate the patience, Nate. You know worries, man. I, uh, I'm in the truck, but I honestly, uh, you know, I've actually recorded the far majority of my podcast in an F-150, and it seems to be that the audio is really, really excellent just because of, like, the, <laughs> the sound damping and the enclosed area, so hopefully it sounds good, but... Um, yeah, I'm excited to talk talk with you guys and, and see what you're all about. So yeah, yeah, yeah no, the the audio it does it, it does sound great. It does, definitely does not sound like you're in a car. We've, no. we've had a few of those in the past. But the like, all right, can you roll the window? Wonderful. Up? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I got a, I got a. Uh, I used to drive an F-150, um, but I just upgraded to. We we got a kid coming here in the next two weeks, and uh, we upgraded so we could have like the full four doors. Because the the baby car seat wouldn't fit in the F one fifty half cab, so we're we're sitting pretty. Well, congrats on the kid, man. Yes, definitely. <laughs> Appreciate it. Is this your first? First boy, yep. Oh awesome, wait, so first boy? Do you have another child? No, this is uh, my wife and I have been married for two years now, and this is this is the first kid. He's a he's gonna be a boy, and nice. that, that's, that's cool. awesome. So my, <laughs> Well, yeah, tell us, if you don't mind, so I, I stumbled across you guys on, I think, probably social social medias, uh, and I think it was Instagram, you started running through videos, and, you know, we've, we've been trying to film more hunts, and obviously, you know, where we can, we partner up and, and jump in a tree and use, you know, real, real video cameras and camera arms and the full setup, but sometimes you just don't, you just don't have the ability to do that, and... Yeah, the tree set yeah, yeah i mean it, it, uh, last night's prime example um actually i, I got got the uh got the stubby in last night and, and did some filming in a tree and it just makes it so much more effective sometimes when you don't have an opportunity to get your arm over to the camera to move it around get in position so when did when did this product start like how did you guys get started where, where are you guys at now compared to when you started uh, it's actually a really long story. Um, I don't know how much, how much of this you want to hear, but I'll just start talking and you can tell me, uh, what questions you have, I guess. But so I, I started painted arrow probably six years ago now. Um, I'm from Michigan. Um, uh, and I always, I, I always like, like many people in the outdoor space, they just have a passion for the woods and the water and, and the, the critters that we get to chase. And I always envisioned myself not working at a desk. I always, really loved wildlife and wanted to like set myself up for like that type of a career. Mm -hmm. And so like, you know, at a young age, I started podcasting. I was one of my mentors in, in my mind. Like I really, um, I've always looked up to Steven Ranella. I've, I've listened to all of his podcasts um, from, you know, I've, I followed him since, since the beginning of, of, of meat eater basically. Yeah. And I always thought he was super charismatic and I loved that he could, he could talk to people um, in such a charismatic way and just, and just get these details and these juicy nuggets out. And so I was like, I'm going to start a podcast because I, I really love talking to people. I love the outdoors. And if maybe I can, you know, you know, combine these two things, maybe I could, I could just meet some people and that would be kind of like my, my outlet to vent, I guess. Yeah. Um, so that, that's really how painted arrow started. Like it was a podcast. I would interview. I remember my first interview with a gal, um, from the UP of Michigan, she uh, she has a dog sledding business, and I met her at a random library in Lansing. I'm from like lower state, um, and she's from obviously uh, up north. Yeah, so we met halfway, and uh, th that was like the total beginning. I had no followers hardly at all, um, and you know, family basically. And like I put myself out there like painted arrow, you know, this is this is what it is, and it was very uncomfortable to be honest with you. Um, uh, never really had any intentions of making money at all. Uh, didn't have any, you know, idea that we were going to uh, 
um, kind of turn into what we have. But uh, I'm going to refer to my partner, um, my co-owner, Devin and I, uh, his name's Devin Cole. We, we built this company together. Um, he he kind of came on board, uh, I would say, like three or four years into um, like Painted Arrow in terms of me starting the podcast. So he, he and I kind of always see things eye to eye. We're hunting partners first and foremost, um, but we're very entrepreneurial minded. And we always were like, you know, um, I remember when we first initially joined, um, I, I was thinking about, um, you know, monetizing in some way, sh- shape or form. And uh, Dev and I kind of agreed that we were going to sell food plot seed. Like that was like our idea. Like we're going to, we're going to buy these, these different seeds. We'll make our own mixtures. We'll, we'll, you know, market it. And at that point we kind of rebranded, I had this, you know, hand drawn logo. And so he came in and we, we kind of rebranded painted arrow and um, kind of like all at that same time, that, that same time frame, you know, Devin, actually created what is now the mag pro um he, he he's an engineer um an entrepreneurial engineer and he had this idea it, it's, it's a very specific hunt and it'd be cool if he were here to tell you it but he you know he kind of had this like this moment where he made a bad shot on a deer he get back you know get, gets back in the truck he takes his phone and throws it on the dashboard on his mag dash um thing that he had I don't even know where he got it from, but he's like, he had had this idea um, and he made this makeshift mount and we still have it today. It's in our, it's in our uh, studio in like the frame, but it's, he he took a couple of L brackets off of a curtain rod holder and he fashioned this mount and like got a magnet on there and he, he, he made one and he called me over and he's like, dude, check this out. And, um, and I was like, that's pretty slick. Like, let's shoot the thing. Let's see if it, you know, let's see if this sucker works. So, we, I remember it like so clearly because it was only a couple years ago. Um, but we were in the back backyard of this house, and we shot it, and like, like it worked. Like this, we put our phone onto this mount that he had fashioned. It went behind his stabilizer, and we threw it on there, and like it, it was vibration heavy, but it it like worked really well. And it all stemmed from you know kind of what you guys were asking about the stubby and, and the long way to answer your question. Like, we were trying just like you and a lot of people were finding out, um, you know, bringing gear into the woods is really, it's cumbersome. Like y- you see these trends in gear and like, it, it, it's, it's always, I think less is more, right? Like the less that's in your hands, the less that you have to fiddle with. And the, like the more mechanisms, the more potential for an error or mistake. That's the way I see it. Um, and like this, this mile, everybody takes their cell phone in the woods with them. Right. Um, Absolutely, it's it's just like a no brainer. So we 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 kind of capitalized at the right time. I'm not going to tell you, you know, sit here and tell you that we're reinventing the wheel. Like we don't have any, you know, super super crazy technology, but we do, um, you know, take credit for. There's obviously a demand, and um, to to get back to the storyline, just just very briefly, like uh, we we tested this thing, we we refined it um, a couple of times, and you know, at the point. Um, where we were with painted arrow we, we had zero intentions of monetizing the product um in any way like we made one for me and we made one for dev and we kind of like we had this thing where like we knew that when we were hunting he would be hunting his property i'd be hunting my property like if we had an encounter we could quickly record it on the cell phone clip it down really quick and shoot that sucker across the country or across the state, wherever I was hunting, he could show me live time what was happening in his woods. And it was like this thing that we had for like two years, almost a couple of years. I don't even remember how long it was, but (laughs) it was long enough to the point where people kept asking us like, what is that thing on your bow? And where do I get one? Like, that's cool. And, uh, you know, we, we kind of started like we were struggling, you know, to, to really gain traction with what we were trying to do with food plot seed, there's just a lot of competition and there's a, a lot of different, um, you know, there's a lot of different seed out there that you can buy. So we were seeing a saturated market. And so we kind of pivoted and we were like, you know, why don't we try and take a small bat, these mounts, um, you know, we kind of had, we, we refined this, this product over time. Like it was kind of, you know, it was, it, it was a lot, it was very similar, but a lot different than the first design that we ever came out with. It obviously wasn't made out of like, you know, curtain rod 
but like we took this this mount and refined it and we tried different steels and aluminums and stainless and we tried all these different things and like all of a sudden we like without even really knowing it we had this product and so we made a small batch i think we made like a couple of, you know 100 150 something like that mm -hmm. and we there's this local show in michigan um and we went down to it a couple of years ago and uh it was like it was so wild guys it was like it was like he put in some cash and i put in some cash and it was just like we made some packaging and um we didn't have a booth design we didn't have like a, a pitch we didn't have we didn't have nothing we had nothing at all you had a product um, and an and we idea. went to the show just to see like what kind of demand yeah exactly i mean exactly we, we just showed up paid the booth space we literally brought a folding table from like our mother's house like it was <laughs> just like that <laughs> um like it was so raw like just this thrown together design of a booth and like you know so anyways we get there and we sold out on the first day of the show oh, i would imagine so sold out yeah we sold out on the first day of the show and we had we had kind of i don't know how to explain it like i'm a, I'm a really entrepreneurial guy i have a, a, a degree in business and a minor in entrepreneurship and like that's really what i love is like building businesses like you know i've always been like i've been flipping cars since i was like since I could even drive, like before I could drive, I think I bought and sold a car before I could even drive. Um, I, I would always like tinker with bicycles. I love selling bicycles from a young age. Like I just love, like I could, I had a knack for like getting old things. I remember I took an old like drum from a, like a dryer, like a laundry dryer. Um, and I took that drum out of there and I, I, ground it down with a with a grinder and I spray painted it and I made like this backyard like fireplace and I sold that sucker on Craigslist and made a hundred you know like a hundred percent profit because I had no money in it like at all yeah. <laughs> so <clears throat> that's kind of I guess a little glimpse about you know who I am um I know I just did a lot of talking but that really is the real real basic um history I guess of painted arrow um there's a there's a ton of detail that i didn't you know mention but i guess if you guys got any questions or if you want to go a different way hit me with it yeah well i think it's i think it's super cool that with, with where phone technologies come and and trying to a, a big thing that we talk about is how do we ad advance to the next generation and how do we get the, the next group of guys hunting how do we keep you know, some younger guys interested now with, with short attention spans that it seems everyone has. How do we keep people more engaged with hunting? And being able to film your own hunt is just another piece that goes into it. Keeps them keeps them re or keeps them engaged, keeps them interested. Now they get a they get to make their content, you know, every time they go out. And this just gives them a way to easily do it, you know, with where camera phones are today. I mean, you, you can go spend, you know, thousand bucks on a on a camera you know yeah. another couple hundred on a setup you know you're you're fifteen seventeen hundred dollars deep just to have a basic camera arm and camera setup and this gives anyone the ability to get out and film their hunts everyone wants to show their buddies you know the the, the deer they saw or the squirrel that they shot and and this is just giving them the ability to do that so i think it's i think it's an awesome awesome tool for kind of taking that taking that next generation of hunters and keeping them, keep them engaged for sure. Well, even put it in the perspective of how you're staying engaged, <clears throat> if you had a GoPro, which is what you've had in different types of mounts, mm -hmm. but if someone wants to show it, what is the steps? They have to go home. Yep. They have to download it on the computer. They have to then send it and convert it, whatever it is, just to be able to show it. Mm -hmm. When it's on their phone, I mean, one, most people probably potentially might miss or forget their uh, release, but they'll definitely not forget their phone. But the fact that they can immediately hit play send mm -hmm. or even potentially go live yeah i mean that's you're changed the game for people that have to deal with like i don't have a gopro i don't have a big camera i don't carry that stuff i don't want to um, but this makes it more unique i was like i could do this but i definitely don't want to carry a big ass camera uh, this <laughs> seems a little bit more convenient yeah. for me and especially if you have a kid yeah. which i just had mine go for his first time carrying stuff in this just makes it that much what? easier phrasing Phrasing. <laughs> yeah. And Nate, um, you know, your, um, your mission statement, I want to bring you to that and cause it kind of ties into our conversation. Um, and it's to create affordable accessories for hunters that allow them to recover more game and relive the hunt time and time again. And just like Scott was saying, um, 
if you're in the market to buy camera stuff, camera gear, uh, arms, uh, you know, your camera arms, your memory cards, your software, everything that goes into editing and filming hunts, you're going to be spending some money, um, probably upwards of a couple of thousands of do- couple thousand dollars. I know this because I just did it last year. Um, but <laughs> giving people the ability to film hunts and, and relive those moments for just the cost of uh, your product is, I mean, that's tremendous. And I think just like Scott was saying, the younger generation, everybody's got their cell phones on them today. Everybody brings them to the stand with them. It's just the way it is now. It, it's not, we don't hunt the same as we used to 50 years ago when grandpa was out there hunting with us. It's, it's different now. And now there's a culture of YouTube and people wanting to, you know, post, post. And, and I, I mean, it's good, right? It's, it's great that we're getting to that point. Hopefully um, it continues. But what you guys are doing is just going to make that uh, so much easier. So much easier. And it, it, it's really breaking down that barrier of affordability um, that a lot of people deal with, even in today, you know, it's no surprise how the, how the world is, how the economy is, how tough things are sometimes, um, giving people the opportunity to, um, do what they want to do with filming hunts at an affordable price is huge. So, uh, what you guys are doing is awesome. So basically hashtag save a marriage. Yeah, <laughs> so you're not <laughs> yeah, spending no. so much money on the gear. <laughs> like I, I want to film, but you know what? I could do it this way. hundred <laughs> percent. Yep. Well, I mean, I, yeah. Like, you know. Oh, good. Go ahead. No, no. After you. I, I was just gonna say, like, you know, I really appreciate you, uh, you know, bringing up the, the mission statement because that that is, it's a simple thing that we threw on on the website, but it's like, that that was very well thought out. And, um, the, the piece that I'm going to talk about in the mission statement is to be able to recover more game, you know, for us, for Devin and I, that has been, that has single handedly been our, like, that, that, that's what it is for us really. I mean, I know that there's, we, we live in the digital age and I like what you said about, you know, we're bringing, keeping, keeping the younger generation more engaged and, and, um, I, I love all that, but like specifically for me, what it is, 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 I mean, it's so cool. I mean, I, I could tell you a bunch of different examples of, um, of hunts that I've had in the last three years. Um, you know, whether it's Turkey or whitetail or whatever, um, but of literally being able to take my cell phone footage filmed horizontally, I can airdrop that to my Mac. I can plug in my Mac to my television and I can watch on the full screen in slow motion exactly what happened um you know you you know you're going to be able to see the moments after when we're all you know shook up from that big buck or whatever you just shot at running away those details that you're able to record um with like you said on a very affordable um basis is, is just it's undeniable like it is it is such a big tool to be able to go back and be like he went over this log. He went around this tree, this tuft of grass. There's a, you know, you can see shadows. There was a, there was a hunt that I had that, um, it was a, it was a morning hunt and I was kind of sitting on this bluff and the way that this deer had escaped this bottom, like I could see a flash of this, of the deer's shadow in this very specific area. And after watching this film, like over and over and over and over before we went back into like, you know, look for this deer and track it, like that little flash made a huge difference in, in where we were. So I was able to go up, you know, um, up in the, up in the stand where I'd shot from and I'm, I'm looking at my dad and I'm waving him over like, you know, a little bit further, a little bit further. And we were actually able to find the tracks, which eventually led to blood, which eventually led to a found and recovered animal um, because of a phone video that we had on that, on that mag pro. So it's like, for me, that's, it's so cool. Um, it's, it's so cool to be able to like see that hunt on film and show your buddies and put it on, you know, YouTube, social media, but it's even cooler to, to find the deer. You know what I mean? Oh, absolutely. And that's ultimately that, right? That's the most important. That's the reason that we're hunting, right? We're not, obviously the, the show part of it is cool. We want to show our friends, our hunt, uh, our, our family. Now that you have a son on the way, you're going to want to show your son the hunt one day, right? That's, that's all mm-hmm. awesome. 
and it means a lot to us. But the most important thing, and we always have to remember, our priority number one is that animal that we harvested. Um, and we can't forget that. Um, I mean, you are, I think sometimes we even take for granted the, um, what's the word? The responsibility, uh, the, the responsibility, right? The, the burden that you're carrying when you take an animal's life like that. Um, and so giving yourself every opportunity to, uh, find where that deer was when you shot it or, you know, um, see where your shot hit at, just different things like that is all going to play a huge role into you recovering that deer potentially. And that's our number one reason um, that we're in the woods is to give that animal respect, um, the respect that it deserves. So uh, I like that you brought that up. Well, and another side of that, right, is, is the, the ethical shot piece. And, you know, I've had it, had it happen a number of times where you are trying to, you're using a camera arm, and you're trying to get the camera in position so you can, can get a shot, and that inevitably either sp- spooks the deer, right? They, they, they know something's going on. They catch some bit of movement, or you're more worried about that looking over and leaning over, check and see if the camera's on them so you can take the shot. This last night, filming, just filming some does, I mean, the ease that I was able to move my hand up just right there because my hand is already on the riser to be able to turn the camera on, zoom in with just tapping my finger zero movement and the does had no idea you know to do that with the camera I, there was no way I'm, i mean i'm not in a good tree anyway oh, wait so i think <laughs> so, you actually texted us yesterday yeah that, the vid- yeah the video that came from, yeah that was actually pretty impressive okay yeah. i didn't realize i thought that was from the camera th- okay even better okay yeah nice. so it, it it helps you not rush a shot right it helps you keep focused on hey i'm trying to harvest this animal i'm trying to take the most ethical shot i can and all of your attention is really there rather than your arm flailing out to the side, moving the camera You're removing variables. Well, yeah. self-filming yeah. is extremely, like, you know, it's extremely tough. I don't, you know, Nate, I don't know how much you self-film. Obviously, I mean, you know, I'm sure you do, but a lot how more much now. you <laughs> film videos and other things with, like, actual camera, it's, I mean, it's difficult um, trying to, especially when you've got seven deer on top of you and you're trying to get in and get that shot for, of that buck coming in and, you're trying to also get your yardage correct and then you're also trying to get i mean it's it's well, a learning curve can i make a point to that yeah you sent us a footage of a, sh- a shot you took just the other day on sunday yes you filmed it with the regular camera right then you used your phone because i guess you were still in the stand mm-hmm. um trying to replay the video so we're seeing it through the camera lens yes through your phone and you get the uh you know the sun glare you got all these things oh, yeah. And I bet that itself was probably cumbersome. It also didn't give us the best visual. We now have to wait to get the real right, footage. Right. If you just used this, you could have just hit send, and we would have gotten it instantly, perfect quality, and yep. we right where you were at. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yep. Yep. Hey, it, it, it's cool. If if someone came up with a with an app to tie to tie it uh, into your phone for yardage. All you'd have to do is hit. <laughs> oh, you can just man. look down at your phone and it's, <laughs> you're, you're aimed right at it. Look at the video. Now the, your yardage pops up. That's a, that, that's a new business. Well, idea you know, for they you. do have that heat map one now. It little plugs in on the bottom of your phone and can give you the heat uh, distribution up to like 50 or 60 yards. So you now can have that connected and have this on your phone. That hit record, be, you know, with deer coming in at going. night. That may be. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my Lord. That's cool. Well, so looking looking at product selection on here and um everything's based towards you know crossbows bows there's rifle rifle uh rifle rings on here is there anything else you guys are looking at uh to to move the product line into any other industries whether it's whether it is uh, hunting and fishing is there another application you guys are looking at we uh we have a lot of very cool product that is in the testing phase, uh, we have a lot of cool product that is scheduled to be released next year. Um, I can give you a, a teaser on on one of them. Um, we have it's a big it's it's been a really big demand that we've seen from the waterfowl, the pheasant hunters, mm-hmm. the turkey hunters, something for a shotgun. Um, we currently have a crossbow mount that works really really well. Um, it seems to be that people think that the, the crossbow mount is designed and created for a rifle. The, the truth of the matter is, is it's not. We, we don't advertise it as a rifle mount. Um, mm-hmm. 
will it work on a rifle? Absolutely, it will. Um, but we just don't advertise it as that because there's just so many different calibers of rifle. Um, I'm sorry, there's so many different calibers and rounds that, like, there's different recoils, right? Yeah. So the mount that's designed for a crossbow is going to work a lot better with a 6.5 Creed more versus a 300 Win Mag, you know? Like, <laughs> I, I wouldn't feel comfortable sitting here. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Like, hmm. I have some really cool footage. Um, I have a suppressor that I have on my 6.5 Creed more, and, I mean, that's like shooting a BB gun. Mm -hmm. And so the footage is epic. It's really cool. Um, the mount works really well on a 22. Um, but we don't have anything right now for a shotgun mount. So we've been we've been prototyping something for I don't know almost a year and a half now, um, and it's there, you know we're testing it obviously with some some of the larger recoil rounds out there like a turkey load, a three and a half inch shell, like twelve gauge, um, some of the more common things that you would see these you know waterfowl guys use. Mm -hmm. um, and we have something that I'm I'm really excited about. And it's very unique. It's not like anything you've ever seen, um, and I, it's it's not it's not out yet. I don't know. I can't tell you when that's going to be out, but we're we're very close to. Uh, I think that'll be a big milestone for us once we get that you know kind of finished up, buttoned up, and and ready to sell. But that, that's that's a teaser that I'll tell you about. I'm very excited about that one. That's awesome. Well, keeping I keep going back to the keep people engaged piece of it uh you guys have video submissions so how does how does that work and what do you guys what do you guys do with the videos that people do submit to you yeah on the, on the top of the website um and it's really easy to find us anywhere like if you just google painted arrow or I, get on I, social I love media the, I love the name painted by the arrow. way the, the name is so so fitting <laughs> I appreciate that man I I really like it too I made it so um yeah, the, you know, the, the video submitted, uh, I'm sorry, video submission on the top of the website, it's called the mag five and it's kind of a play on words. Um, mag meaning magnetic, but it's basically the top five videos that we're highlighting each year that were submitted in. So last year we had, um, a bunch of cool videos that people, you know, harvested animals and we went through on a podcast of ours and, and kind of just broke down the top five. And then the number one video that was submitted that, you know, basically the, the, the voting pool is Devin and I, so it's not a big, it's, it's not a big voting <laughs> pool, but it's just, you know, I think last year, what we said is we're, you know, we're, we're judging these based on just creativity and the ability to capture that moment. Mm -hmm. um, and that moment can mean a bunch of different things to a bunch of different people. So, um, I think the, you know, the hunt that won last year um, was a, a gentleman that he's actually been on the podcast um, to tell the story after the hunt, but he is from down South and he shot a really good buck. He got, you know, the buck running across um, a river and it was just cool, the story that he had with it. And so again, it's called the mag five. We take the top five videos of the year and we review them. So if you, if you do shoot something, if you're out there listening to this, and it's on your cell phone. You literally just go to our website and you can upload it from your, your photos on your phone and it's super easy. So I would, I would recommend it. We love looking at the videos, obviously. So it's cool. And do you want that? Do you want that just as the straight video video or do you want it? Do you want it to edit it at all? Whatever it is that you want us to see. Hmm. Awesome. Just needs to be all, all, uh, Hunted uh, related. Well, all all painted arrow, <laughs> painted taken with a taken with painted arrow. Um, Here's uh, the reason oh, Scott right. is asking so many questions <laughs> is because he just bought one and he's planning on killing a deer with I'm, it. So I'm definitely planning. You on may or deer. may not get a video submission from Georgia here pretty soon. So no, I'm no, you. yeah. The, the, the only two requirements are is yeah, it has to be on a mount, mm -hmm. right? It has to be on one of our products and it has to be with your cell phone. That's the only two requirements. So if you want to make a little you know, do that and make an intro and make a whole thing about it. Yeah. Send it. But like, if all you got's that clip, that's great too. Like we're just looking for creativity and, and maybe it's a cool setup. I remember second place last year was a doe. Um, this, this doe was taken like on the side of a, a mountain, basically it was on a hillside. I'll call it a bluff. It was in like a bluff and it, it like did a backflip. Like this doe <laughs> did a backflip. And it was so cool. Like the footage was just so serene and it was just cool. Like, so it doesn't have to be anything specific. No, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, like, well, you probably hear us all the time, but man, this thing really is a game changer. My, my, again, first time with it last night, just sitting there playing with it. I've, 
there's some areas where I thought, hey, I've hunted this stand a bunch before, and there's there's always a couple places right there where I'm like, if a deer comes in right there, like I'm there's there's no way I'm gonna get this filmed because of how I'm gonna have to turn, I'm gonna have to get the camera out of the way. Do you need me to come there's film? No, yeah, you can come film for me. Okay, I'll come film you. I got I got I got, uh, I got this now, so. But yeah, this last night I was oh, able does that to replace me. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> nothing replaces you, Buttercup. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> but I was able, I was able to go through a couple of the shots or sequences that I thought could happen, and I can capture them using this now. I mean, I, I don't yeah. have to worry about not getting the shot on on camera. And it gives you a whole nother angle. Absolutely. Like, uh, I run a GoPro to give me like a third person view. I run my, uh, <clears throat> I run my Canon camera as well, and then this gives you a, a third angle. Uh, potentially um so which is all good for making videos the more angles yeah that, that being said i'll be i'll be submitting a video shortly <laughs> <laughs> hopefully you got to get in the woods first buddy and I, I i'm really thinking that eight's going to come back in tonight i've, I've got a so I've, I've, a couple years ago i moved uh moved out to the country uh city life is is not for me so i moved out to the country and got a little bit of acreage and and i haven't shot anything off of off my property yet this is the third season and uh there's one buck uh I've gone back to pictures and that wide because that wide eight is one that i actually had on camera the first season that i moved out here uh that that august so i'm he's three years older now and not super predictable but he's he's i think predictable enough hopefully he'll be able to if i was in my stand the other night i would have killed him <laughs> i think i told you to yeah go to that stand you did you did so uh jason has this knack uh, last year, uh, every time he told me what stand I need to hunt, whether we were in Missouri or in Illinois, uh, when he picked the stand, I killed I killed a buck. It, it, it that is no lie. Could, like, could we change that to picking the lottery? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. He would. Uh, it was our last day, and last year, uh, me and Scott did a multi-state hunting expedition uh, in the Midwest, and. First stop was Missouri. We got a chance to film a few veterans on a hunt um, that they were on. We uh, kind of partnered with this nonprofit organization called B4 Outdoors, um, and we've had previous podcasts with him. His name's Kevin, um, and they're out of Elmer, Missouri. They just basically um, they send first responders, veterans, and, and their families on all expense paid hunts in the Midwest. Um, and fish, they actually fish, do fishing stuff. trips too. They do stuff all over the, the country. They do bear trips, um, uh, like bear hunting and, and all kinds of stuff. So check them out. But, um, very cool, very good org- organization. Um, we'll, we may even like link them in the bottom since we're kind of mentioning them so people can check them out. But, um, yeah, we got a chance to go up there, film, and in return, we kind of hunted for a few days um, after the veterans left. And it was down to the wire. It was the last day. And we were sitting on this beautiful, beautiful bottom that was – it's just like when you think of hunting the Midwest, it is mm-hmm. – it's a just a river bottom. And it was – really is breathtaking. That's one of the most beautiful stands I've Axel's ever seen all life. around you. You're in this bottom. There's this big river. Just perfect spot. And um, we just, Scott's like, where do I go? Where do, I'm like, man, go sit this stand. Uh, I hunted this stand uh, years prior and actually killed a pretty decent buck out of it. And I was like, go sit that stand. It's at the base of this, uh, base of the river bottom there. And he went and ended up shooting a very nice buck. Uh, fast forward, we go down to Illinois the few days later. Um, it was last evening again, wasn't uh-huh. it? Uh, yeah. Last evening again, last hunt. And um, nobody had filled, well, Brandon had filled a tag. And Scott was struggling on where to go, um, and I was just like, man, just go sit. Because I had sat this area a day or two before, and I was like, man, go sit this area. I'm telling you, there's a good deer in there. I, I'm going to go sit somewhere else, but I'm telling you, you'll there's a good chance that something will go down there. Sure enough, he gets over there, and he shoots at just an absolute monster. How old? Eight-year-old? Seven, seven, seven and a half. Seven and a half-year-old deer. Just he, n- very nice deer. And... Um, so that's kind of our running joke now. Um, well, and th- both of those scenarios were things that happened so quick. There wasn't a chance I could get a camera around. To, and, and had I had I been using this last year, I, I absolutely would have got yeah. at least a, at least the first one, at least the Missouri buck. Illinois may have still been shaking yeah. because of how quick. But 
Yeah, this this absolutely would have gave me a much better chance of getting those, you know, last second. Oh, uh, it's it's time to shoot shots on camera, for sure. Yeah, for sure. no, I, I that's so cool. I mean, hearing you guys say that, I mean, it it it, it really means a lot. I mean, just I, I recently uh, I recently quit my day job. My my first my first legitimate um, day working for Painted Arrow was July seventh. So that's amazing. It's, it's, uh, yeah, Congrats. it's, it's, it's been a long road. It's been a long, um, it's, it's just been a crazy journey that, that God has got me on and, and to hear you guys sit here and, and, and just love the product. It, it honestly means so much. Like I can't even tell you uh, how cool that is. So I, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of it. I think it makes things real simple and, um, you know, you, you guys are, you're going <laughs> to, I want to see the footage. So if you do it, if any of you guys well, get something, I want to see it pick for sure. Up that crossbow one for my son, mm -hmm. because I mean, now that I, the, the ability to potentially be able to get his point of view, not just from my side angle with my phone. Now he can have it directly underneath him. That'd be pretty neat. Yeah. And, and that's, so that's one thing. Most of the guys on, on our team all have one or two kids and, you know, and they're, they're just getting to that age where, you know, both Brandon and, and you, Travis, both have a, a kid right there who's who's starting to hunt. Uh, Chasing, you're you're not too far behind. So you know, as a, as a single guy, no kids, it's it's pretty cool. I get to sit here and watch these guys as dads really kind of transition into a, a little bit uh, different time in their in their hunt in their hunting life, right? Where they're really, I can see how much they are focused on you know the importance of giving their kids the best experience possible. Uh, to, to get them into hunting, to, you know, make it comfortable for them, to make it exciting for them. And yeah, that's something that, you know, your kid's going to love being able to have that footage from him behind the bow. So it's, 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 it's cool to see this used on so many different, different levels for so many different things. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. I agree too. So in, in long story short, if you've got kids or if you just want a, a nice, easy, affordable way to film your hunts uh, for your kids to, film their hunts, get their point of views, um, all these different, there's all kinds of different aspects to this product, uh, then this uh, product at Painted Arrow would be definitely something you need to consider. And here at Bo uh, My Bow Rush, we don't, we're not going to advertise or we're not going to talk about a product that we don't, um, that we don't either A, believe in or, you know. Tried. Or at least tried, right? And, and so... Scott has tried this product. Um, we're all actually sitting here lo looking at it this morning. He's got it on his bow right now. So this is something that we've seen. We've seen footage from this, uh, from his hunt last night. So, you know, when we're telling you that this is something that's very cool and it's easy and it's affordable, that's what we mean. Um, just for reference, like a, I'm not going to say brand names, obviously, but a similar brand that, you mount to your bow that is actually its own camera, not your phone, but it's, it's your own camera. You're going to spend uh, anywhere from two to three to four hundred bucks, somewhere in that ballpark, um, and that is mounting a camera to your bow and then using that footage. Um, and I've seen footage footages from those, and I'm telling you that iPhones nowadays take just as good, if not better, footage than those oh, things yeah. do. And even with those, you have to go back and you have to pull the footage. Uh, pull the footage. You have to download the footage, convert the footage. You got to do all this stuff. Um, with this, it's just one less. Actually, it's a lot less steps, and it's um, so just something to consider, guys. And and it's a fraction of the price of what that product cost. Um, and I don't have to say names, but probably everybody knows kind of which direction I'm talking about. Um, Painted Arrow, the products they have, it, it's a fraction of the cost. Um, and that's huge. So, um, some, something I'd say just from the, the limited amount that I've used just so far and thinking about scenarios and, and, and how I'm going to use it and what do I, what do I need to make sure I'm using it effectively, um, is a piece that, uh, you know, me and me and Nate, you know, uh, we talked about this a little bit when I called you the other day, but it's, it's how to mount the actual, uh, metal pad, the magnet to the back of your camera. Uh, I highly recommend anyone that buys this get get the tough case from Painted Arrow as well for for a couple purposes. One, right? You really need, <clears throat> you really need to have this mounted to a hard plastic case 
um, not to one of the, the silicone ones that, that, that a lot of us do have, but you need it mounted to a hard plastic case. And you may already have one of those on your phone. Um, but something that I'm, I'm planning on doing, right, is having my specific case that has this mounted so I'm not always walking around and I'm not potentially damaging that plate by walking around on my daily use in and out of my pocket, scraping its keys when I do drop it. So I always have the, that thing kind of kept in its place. When I go hunt, I can pop, pop my, my phone out of my daily use case, throw it into my painted arrow hard case. And, and, and go, right? Trying to keep it as pristine as possible. You know, your hunting gear is your hunting gear. It's all it's all tools that we need to keep up, just like our bow, right? We wax the string. We make sure uh, we're not dropping it on the ground. Same thing here, right? Keep keep uh, keep a, keep your hard case for hunting with that attachment on it, again, so you're not damaging in your daily use. You, do, you, good point. do you agree with that, Nate? Yeah, yeah, 100%. I mean, I guess we didn't do a really great job or I didn't do a really great job of explaining how it actually worked. But, um, so the, when you buy our bow mount, uh, it, it, it's a, there's a metal plate. It's a one side adhesive and it sticks on the back side of your phone. And that's just a piece of metal. Okay. It's not a magnet. Everybody thinks that that's the magnet, but it's just a piece of metal and that adheres to the back side of your phone case. And so to your point, you don't want to put that on a soft rubber silicone type of case it's not necessarily that it won't stick because it does sometimes stick really well, but it just provides additional movement when you release your arrow and your bow kind of has that, that moment of vibration. Mm -hmm. It's going to make your video appear more, you know, vibration intense than it needs to be. If it were on a hard plastic case, it just quickly dampens and you can get all that footage that you're looking for. Um, but yeah, the, the other really important piece to the setup process on the compound bow mount, um, we have a foam dampener. Yes. And that's, um, that's, that's the piece that it goes on the mount itself. So if you look up, you know, Painted Arrow Mag Pro, the Mag Pro is the name of the product. Um, there's a piece of foam that goes on the bottom of the mount and that compresses on the top side of your stabilizer bar. And so when you, uh, when you screw in your stabilizer bar, that's what's holding the mount to the bow. But when you compress it down, there's a slot um, that allows you to have movement north and south. That, that compression of that foam it really takes a lot of that, that vibration out. Like I was, I was mentioning everybody, everybody wants to say like, you know, there's, there's two points of view on this. People think that there's, it's uh, you know, you know, we, there's, there's a lot of vibration, right? Mm -hmm. the, the, the thing is, is like the phone technology is what's allowing your, your, your shot to be clear or not. So if you got an iPhone, you know, six or seven, I mean, my Lord, <laughs> your, your footage is going to be really poor compared to a newer cell phone. Like I'm mm -hmm. using an iPhone 14, um, pro and like the auto image stabilization inside of that camera it's unbelievable like you wouldn't even believe it if you saw it there's a lot of people that come in on our videos and they like they don't even have any idea that it's filmed with our mount or on a cell phone you, you know they think it's some some high-end camera that's on a camera arm um, so all this to say that you know we're, we've never once claimed that this is going to replace a really nice high-end camera setup with a mirrorless Sony, um, you know, whatever hmm. it's, it's not gonna, but it's, it's an amazing affordable option guys and gals to just get in the game, to get a little bit of Intel before going into that blood trail. That's always been our, our statement. So I, Nate, I gotta yeah, ask you real if, quick. If you want to make sure you, s yep, go ahead. No, I, I didn't mean to cut you off, man. You're good. I was I was just gonna babble some more about the same thing. Well, <laughs> yeah. Um, I've got to ask you, for the grandpas out there, is there a flip phone attachment yet? <laughs> <laughs> so, to be honest with you, I'm just messing um, you. My, you <laughs> no, but this is this is true. Like you go to shows, we go to shows. You know, that's, that's one of the things that I do for the company. Um, I, I operate the company, okay? So, uh, Ben's more of the, he's our design um, engineer. He does a lot of our prototyping things. Um, and he does a lot of our kind of um, higher end over, oversight of the company. But I'm operating it on a day-to-day -day basis. So, I go to these shows and I, I meet with these people quite a bit that are maybe older. Maybe they uh, they don't quite get the whole phone thing. You know what I'm saying? They don't quite get it. Um, they don't understand how, why, why would you want to do that? It just seems like a waste of money. You know, like they just don't get it. Um, 
and and to that point like the flip phone comment like it, it's funny because it's kind of true but you know what what's really cool is when you get that guy there, there's there's a guy he's an older guy and you know that guy is you know he's still kind of hip and he's he's very mentally from ear to ear very clean he can have really clear like it's there's a guy that gets our product and when we get that guy at the show and he's an older guy like i almost want to just give him the product and be like please use it like you're <laughs> yeah. gonna love this thing yeah. man you're gonna it's so cool like you're gonna you're gonna absolutely love it and it's like a thing for them to play with and i really love when we get an older guy that just grasps the idea of our pro you know our products and our brand and um it's it's funny you mention that because it's it's a very common thing well and a lot of times man the old you know um, the older generation, they're they're stuck in their ways. I'm not saying this to throw any kind of shade or anything towards towards them, but they they've hunted the way they've hunted for years, and that's how they were taught to hunt. And they wear the same kind of camo. All this expensive camo is useless. All this scent control is useless. I'll go out there with my blue jeans and my t-shirt and shoot my deer um, off my front porch. Like it, you know, it's or. Maybe that's a little extreme, but uh, <laughs> we're not, you know, not not up here, man. Not in North Georgia. The point is, is that a lot of times people get stuck in their ways and they don't want to branch out. And so, um, if you if you are able to appeal and, and get to those people, and you know, it, not even the younger people, just get everybody involved. I know we were putting a lot of emphasis on younger people, and but if we can get you know uh, some of the older generation involved and filming hunts and sharing those memories i mean i would love to have footage of some of my grandpa's hunts um some of the deer he's killed some of the stories because you know he'll tell you about those stories but it's one thing to be able to see that story and relive that story um and it really as far as the simplicity of the product that they can do it it's not anything that somebody that doesn't understand technology or understand camera angles or understand this and that they can still do this um it doesn't mm -hmm. take knowledge of filming hunts and different things like that to be able to operate this if you can film your grandson out there playing in the yard you can film a deer with this product it's that simple so mm -hmm. so where can um as listeners are, are listening to this where can where can they find you what are your socials what's your website how how can they uh get this product how can they get um paint and arrow product in their hand yeah so like i said earlier if you just google search painted arrow outdoors i mean we're we're on there you're going to see us on our website um we if, if you are listening maybe you're out west uh we're a michigan-based company we are in shields so um if you've got a local shields you know pop into there and, and check out some of the products in there um uh, also like our social media we do a lot of updates on there you know i it's it's funny because i don't I'm, I'm kind of like uh, an old guy in the sense of uh, I don't I don't love social media. I don't like being out there. Mm -hmm. But with the company, I'm like I'm the guy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I'm. I'm... <laughs> hmm. So it's like if you want to see updates of, of some of the things that Devin and I do, um, you know, we have we both have uh, farms that we hunt, and we we can you know continually update on you know, food plot stuff that we're doing, or maybe we are cutting down trees one day. Like, we're passionate bow hunters. So if you want to follow us in our journey, um, it's kind of cool. We put a lot of energy into uh, Instagram. You can find us. Uh, it's just painted arrow outdoors. And um, yeah, uh, if you guys want to reach out, I mean, anybody listening has any questions, we have a, a, a number on our website. You can call or text and you'll get someone, you know, somebody from the crew that that'll help you. Maybe even me, sometimes I'm answering those. So um, would love to hear any questions, thoughts that you guys have. And I really do appreciate you guys having me on. Like I really do. I'm, I'm honored to be on, on your podcast. So, well, we, we appreciate you, man. Um, congratulations on your, on your baby yeah, boy, Rich. Yep. Um, wish you guys health and happiness and, and for mama to be everything to go good on that side. And you guys are in our prayers down here in Georgia. Um, and if you need anything, uh, from my bow rush, man don't hesitate to reach out we'd love to support you any way we can or um anything of that nature just let us know and uh we we sure appreciate you coming on very much yeah. so yeah if there's anything same thing if you guys need anything holler at me i'd love to uh i'd love to help in any way i can and i want to see 
some of these critters that you're killing with with those mounts so well we're, definitely send them well we're, we're we're about to order some more stuff so if you can just get yeah. it shi- get it, get it shipped. <laughs> yeah. i'm, I'm I can excited do that. man we, thank you so much for coming on uh, hopefully we'll be able to uh, uh sit down with you and Devin in the future and, and see what you guys are continuing to do with uh with the product line and the company as a whole yep we would love to do that absolutely awesome hey thank you so much i hope you have a great thank day you. today okay Yep, thanks guys. Appreciate it. Hey, talk to you.